sürekli atölyeler yapıyor, sürekli eğitim yönetimi alanında çalışıyor. Ve sanıyorum son birkaç, yani birkaç yıl içerisinde birkaç tane kitabı yayınlandı. Biz bu detaylı bilgiyi CV'sinde sunduk ama tekrar buradan hatırlatmak istiyorum. Ve tabii gerek bizim olmak, zamanın çok içinde ve kendisi böyle okulları da, şeyi de, yani işbirliğini de, uygulamalı çalışmaları da teorikten daha çok özellikle yapmaya çalışan bir akademisyen olduğu için ben onun değerlendirmelerinin burada bize ufuk açacağını düşünüyorum. Çünkü her dinlediğimde gerçekten çok yararlanıyorum kendisinden. Designing and Leading Educational Change for Innovative School, School onun şimdi konuşmasının e, isim, adı yazıyor sanıyorum tahtada da zaten. Yenilikçi okullar için değişimin tasarımı ve liderliği. Belki şöyle çok güzel bir bütünlük olacak. Dün bir mimarı konuşturduk burada Uğur Hoca'yı. Uğur Hoca'nın yapmış olduğu mecaz yani eğitimin e, içeriği hakkında benim bir fikrim yok dedi. Ama gerçeği yani eğitim binaları ile ilgili fikrim var dedi. Bugün... Halit Bey bize o mecaz kısmını anlatma fırsatı bulacak. Ee, öyleyse ben Halit Bey'i misafir, e, misafirimizi davet edeyim. Ee, dear guest, I introduce Dr. Halit to our Turkish audience. And I think you all very, very, you know very well the Dr. Halit, so I don't need to say anything more about Dr. Halit to you. So just I will invite him to stage to hear his a uh, very outstanding uh, speech. Thank you very much. Hoş geldiniz. Good morning to everybody. I uh, will move to uh, English. Um, I'd like first to start with uh, uh, thanking my uh, distinguished friend, uh, Professor Salahuddin. We have been uh, with connection for more than a decade. So thank you, Salahuddin, for uh, all minglings and cross uh, um, sections that we have uh, along uh, uh, together. And uh, of course, I want to thank also Ibrahim uh, for uh, uh, all the capacity that he has a uh, hold in order to bring this uh, conference uh, to uh, uh, a vivid uh, program along with the uh, organizing committee uh, of this uh, uh, conference. So thank you all and thank you very much always for your warm uh, uh, welcome. You know, uh, I like Turks. I like because I have lots of friends here and uh, I always get excited and pleased to meet my friends and to uh, um, feel their warm uh, look after uh, their guests. So thank you all. So I shall first start with asking the question of why it's important to focus on the principles of design uh, while we lead or construct uh, education uh, uh, entities or learning uh, environments and uh, how we should adapt uh, uh, these environments to the student's character, the student's culture, the student context, his desire, goals and products of education and surely this will be you know, uh, uh, a stepping stone in uh, designing any education uh, uh, policy within a nationwide education policy or uh, a governance policy or a local uh, uh, policy of uh, constructing uh, education uh, in, in environment. So if we look nowadays to education uh, systems, uh, we can see that they are not <coughs> adequately productive what they are a, uh, expected to. So there is a gap. There is a gap of, uh, between our expectation of education uh, system and uh, what uh, they are doing. This gap can be both uh, uh, sensed in their products, in the meeting of the uh, capabilities of the new uh, learners. And because of this gap, we keep asking the question of 
uh, the uh, uh, adaptability or the relevance of this education uh, system to now the nowadays uh, learning. So school has an adaptability of change. The big question is, does this change have to be, you know, imposed change come from central education system towards a uh, school or a change within uh, uh, the school? This is what I will try uh, uh, to focus in uh, this uh, uh, lecture uh, today. So, in this keynote, I will tackle the following three aims. One is to explore the different changes in education that we can uh, point uh, to, and of course to describe cutting edge trends in uh, 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 and scholarship in education uh, uh, design and uh, change, and finally to end up with two models that combines both experimental education, innovative school uh, education change that comes within uh, the school and designing of structures and environments that meet the uh, needs of uh, uh, educators uh, in this uh, century. If we look to education system worldwide, it's not specific to Turkey or uh, uh, to any uh, education system uh, in the West or in the East, we will see that education in general lacks a scientific theoretical foundation. We can't speak about an introduction of education. We can't speak about a theory that arrived in every different context. So it's very important to point to that. The second thing is lack of response for human diversity. If we in any class today, we will see diversified students, different students, both in gender, age, even if they're colors of, of their DNA. So we are dealing with the same tools, same standards, and adopting different you know, industrial terms in order to educate. By then, we lose the uh, uh, diversity notion of education. The learners, we behave with them, we lead them, we educate them in a mechanical uh, perception. That we, okay, we have learners, we have inputs, we have processes, and we should get these products. And for these products, they are examined, <coughs> they fail, they succeed, yeah? And so we do not meet uh, uh, their uh, uh, needs. Also, uh, the significance of child development. Each mom here or dad, if he has a child of five months and another child of eight months, eight months, only three months difference makes a big difference. When you get in the class, these ch children are divided in the same class. Well, sometimes the gap is 11 months or 10 months, okay? They, their context, their background, their familiar background is different, but we uh, treat them as they were, uh, 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 um, they look, you know, uh, similar and uh, insufficient uh, attention to globalization. Yesterday, in our, uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, presentation, uh, a 15 years old girl stand and spoke in Turkish. According to us, learning exists in the school within the traditional mechanism of learning. Yet, we saw a girl speaking, yeah, uh, I will spoke in Turkish. She studied this from YouTube. She has been watching Turkish telenovelas and she studied Turkish. So there are different stages of learning that happens outside the school. And of course, 
the uh, education entities, entities are uh, using uh, anachronic uh, models. So this brings us to the following argument that education systems and programs are irrelevant and we face worldwide low academic achievements and this of course brings to the fore yeah, why why this happens and of course this uh, 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 um, leads us to try to improve education system how we do this in a linear school structure classes schools so all this structure is treating the diversified students in the same uh, mechanism and in the same way. The school organization, its administration, all set, you know, in structure and mechanical uh, structure that failed to meet the uh, learners' uh, differences. And of course, this reflects in our teaching method. We have curriculum it is set and normally there is a gap between what is taught now in the school and what is exist outside the schools some school has count this gap of five years up to 30 years difference between uh, the capabilities that learner must uh, uh, um, uh, uh, present and uh, what he is uh, taught within <clears throat> within this uh, uh, situation, um, uh, we need we need, of course, uh, to think of in medicine a core to education uh, education uh, uh, problems. Uh, mainly, my uh, presentation is based on both this book and these different uh, papers that I have wrote about imposed uh, uh, education changes instead of uh, changes that uh, uh, comes from within the school and uh, throughout a partnership. So we need medicine to this problem. So let's look to the medicine that we have used in order to cure the education systems in the world. First, money, money, give more money. Give more money to education system, invest more, you will get a better education product. Benefit, zero. Second thing, learning programs. If we look to the 80s, if you want to change any education system, you should change the learning program, then you will get another or a better product because of the programs and then the learning programs of course nowadays are a very small portion of the knowledge that a student can uh, get so there is there is a lot of knowledge outside the schools and also there is a, a shift from analogic of uh, uh, knowledge to digital uh, uh, knowledge and of course there are alteration of learning both of physical places of learning tools that we will see so learning programs as uh, a core for this program was ha has not you know uh, arrived with any solution technology if you want <coughs> improve education system Use technology, use projectors, use this and that, and what happened? Nothing. We use the technology in, a, in, 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 the, in the, the most uh, uh, technical way. This brings us to four different, uh, 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 four different <coughs> education changes types. One is if we are not happy with the compulsory education system, we turn to privatization. Privatization. If we are not happy with privatization because we are used in this machine, we go to 
different schools that has been founded through an academic initiation. John Dewey started uh, with this, and with the, this you know, wave, uh, we have lots of uh, 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 initiation, or we have changes that uh, uh, brought within uh, a personal initiative. And of course, the biggest change is coming from the government, imposed reforms. So, um, uh, <coughs> one of the great scholars of reforms, uh, uh, nobody says a reform is a starting of the next reform. I mean, when you start with a new reform now, when you reach its end, you start another reform. So reform is not, you know, uh, uh, ending. And we have, of course, different examples of these different types of schools. So why education system failed? One, system size. System size. Education system in Turkey is very big. In order to control it, to control it, you need an army of inspectors, of officers, of, and a mechanism to hold on the whole system. Yet, you will try to hold the whole system with the same mechanism. Then, complexity of the system. The system is complex, and one of its very cool complex, so the complexity is the child himself. You are dealing with a human, with a human uh, uh, body, with a human identity. Okay, so it's not a uh, uh, socks manufactory that if you bring this and that, you will get that. So then also the human culture, 